And we are joined now by attorneys Dick Carputlian and Jim Griffin, uh, who lead Alec Murdoch's defense team. Uh, Dick, Jim, good morning to both of you. Thanks for your time this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Craig. You've got affidavits, you've got interviews from uh, three jurors and one dismissed juror. And in one of the uh, one of the affidavits here, this is Juror 630. Juror 630 says, quote, according to the affidavit, I had questions about Mr. Murdoch's guilt, but voted guilty because I felt pressured by the other jurors. The juror, the juror there did not say he felt pressured by, by Becky Hill. So are you accusing her of actually influencing the verdict or just acting improperly? In, in, Craig, any time there's outside influence in the sanctity of the jury room, it is improper. And the, the question, the legal question is not whether the outcome of the trial would have been different. The question is what, whether the information provided to the jury outside the confines of the courtroom is, is prejudicial. I mean, it, it, you, you can never go back and, and, and rewind the clock or put the toothpaste back in the tube. So, so you know, that, that's a game that we can't play. But what we do know is the conduct that the, that the jurors have reported to us is highly improper and, frankly, illegal. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dick, though, but to, to get this new trial, you're going to have to prove that whatever Becky did or said would have had some sort of material impact on the verdict, correct? Wrong. That's, we've got to show she acted improperly. If improper conduct occurred, um, there is a presumption that we get a new trial. I mean, it is the, the United States Supreme Court, the Court of Appeals of South Carolina have all ruled on this issue. I've got to say, we couldn't find a single case where the Kirk of Court did something like this, but we did did find a couple cases where bailiffs did this. So there are cases where court officials say things, do things that indicate uh, they have an opinion or that they interfere in the in the uh, the dissemination of information uh, to the jury um, outside the courtroom. So this, no, we we don't have to show that would it would have made a material difference. This this motion is going to have to be heard by the same trial judge uh, who oversaw. Uh, the case, Judge Newman. Are you are you planning on asking for a new judge? Well, I mean, we, first of all, the Court of Appeals has to rule it goes back. Secondly, I think Judge Newman realizes, based on our filings, and he's a witness. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But I think Judge Newman uh, is going to carefully examine. Uh, I have the greatest respect for him. And I think he's going to examine the pleadings and the issues and may, may conclude, as we have, that he's going to be a witness in this process. Why would he be called as a witness? Well, there's at least two instances where uh, it was reported to him, one instance where clearly it was reported to him that uh, the clerk had a conversation with a juror outside of the confines of the jury room, not under his direction. And he says, as we say in the, in the, in the, in the filings, he found that... Uh, unsettling. The question is, did he do, did he follow it up with questions? If not, why not? What, you know, what happened there? And then there's another instance involving um, uh, information concerning some Facebook posts that apparently were made up, uh, and we need to ask him uh, about that. Jim, the, the reality is, last question, the reality is a couple of weeks, uh, Alec Murdoch set to plead guilty reportedly to a slew of other federal crimes, federal financial crimes. There's still some outstanding state crimes as well. Um, he is likely going to spend the rest of his life in prison regardless of, of the outcome here. Uh, what do you say to some who might suggest you, you guys are just trying to sow the seeds of doubt, perhaps change public perception that Alec Murdoch did in fact kill his wife and son? Well, Craig, we strongly believe he did not kill his wife and son. He has admitted readily, you know, since September of 2021, that, that he engaged in financial fraud, financial misconduct to support uh, opioid addiction. He has never denied that. Now, he's, he's ready to accept the punishment for that. Is that life in prison without parole? We don't think so. We, we think it's substantially less than that. But, you know, it, as his son has said, and we have all said, a fraudulent lawyer does not equate to a murderer, and he did not murder his wife and son. Dick Carputley and Jim Griffin, thank you both for your time this morning, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Be interesting to see how this turns out. Pretty extraordinary development there in South Carolina.
Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.